God bless everyone, Sammy D here one more time in my movie, of course, bringing to you a word that I believe is going to bless you, it's going to lift you up, and I want to encourage you by the power of the Spirit of the living God that's in me. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says, has quickened, that word quickened means has brought to life our mortal bodies. God is in the business of bringing you and I back to life. You see, you and I, we bury the dead, God resurrects the dead, if you don't believe me, ask Lazarus. Ah, there you go. Perfect example. And he's done it with many others. And he's done it with us. We were dead in our sins. We were on our way to hell. You say, Sammy D, speak for yourself. I'm speaking for everybody according to the word of God. We all have sinned. All means all. And come short of the glory of God. And in case you didn't know, the wages of sin is death. You work somewhere. You work in a company, in a factory, in a hospital. You work at a grocery store. You may have your own business. Sooner or later, at the end of pay period, you expect a paycheck because you put in some work and you expect some money to come back your way. So the wages of sin, when we sin, God pays us with what? Death. Here you go, because you never repented, never accepted Jesus Christ. Your wages is death. What is death? Sammy, we all die. We all die once physically, but then there's the eternal separation from God. That's the eternal life, the eternal hell, the eternal death. You don't want to go there. So Keep in touch with God. Walk with him. Talk with him. Let him lead you and guide you. Follow him. And God will bless you all the days of your life. And say 41 years. I was on my way to hell. I could have caught an overdose because of shooting dope. I could have caught a disease. I could have been shot. I could have died in prison. But God had his hand upon me just like he had his hand upon you. You say, Sammy, I never used drugs. You could have been hit by a truck. You could have caught some disease or something. But God has kept you. Why? Because he has a purpose for you to bring you to that place in which he had designed for you from the foundations of the world. He told Jeremiah from your mother's womb, I formed you and I prepared you now I'm putting my words in your mouth so you can go and preach to the nation. So God has a purpose for you and I want you to get that. I want to read to you a verse, a scripture. I'm going to just share very briefly. I feel I'm fired for God. I've been praying, seeking the face of God and God has been good to me. God has been wonderful to me. The spirit of the living God has touched my life. The windows of heaven are open. He's pouring out his blessing of upon me. And I want you to catch this here. Oh, somebody said, if you get on fire for God, people will come to watch you burn. And fire is contagious. I pray you get this in your heart too. Listen, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2. <coughs> I wasn't sneezing. <laughs> I said 2. <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study. That's the way he starts. Study. Not too many of us like to study. <laughs> I'll be the first one to tell you that. I don't like to study, but I need to. I have to. I want to stay in touch. Whatever it is you study. Study music. May study math, science, social studies. I like to study the word of God. <laughs> Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So he starts off, this is Paul the Apostle. He's, he's preaching to Timothy. Encouraging this young pastor that he put in charge of a church. He tells him, study! Maybe he didn't say it like that, but it boils down to the same. To show yourself a proof. By God. Paul, what do you mean by that? Explain that to me, Paul. Well, prepare yourself to show yourself a proof. Show God you're ready. If you play any sports, soccer, hockey, baseball, basketball, football, I don't know, golf, tennis, ping pong, whatever sport you're into. You practice, you study your sport to show your manager, your coach, I'm ready. And when they need you, they say, this guy's ready. Put him out there. So here, Paul is saying to Timothy, study. He's telling them what I've been doing. I've been studying. I've been preparing myself, Paul is saying. And he says, study, Timothy, to show yourself approved by God. God will put people in your life and he'll put you in people's life and they'll say, this man, a woman of God 
they study. A workman who needs not be ashamed. Riley dividing the word of truth. Need not be ashamed. I remember one time I was in my old church. I love this man of God. I call him General, the Apostle Luciano Padilla Jr. He was pastoring the Bay Ridge Christian Center. Today, his son, Pastor Luke, is pastoring the World's Harvest Community Center. If you're looking for a church, go there. They'll treat you like royalty. I was standing, worshiping. Pastor comes up to me, he says, Sam, it looks like the preacher I invited is not showing up. Can you preach? I said, yes, Pastor General Padilla. I'm ready. You see, I didn't have to say, wait a minute. Let me go downstairs and go through my Bible. Let me pray for an hour. Let me see. Can I run home and get my notes? You got to be ready. Freddy. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Betty. In season and out of season. If you play baseball and say, listen, I need you to go up there and hit the ball. I don't have nobody. Wait, can anybody lend me a bat? How do you swing this bat? Or basketball. Now, you may say, this guy's too corny. But watch this. I'm not a phony. How do you dribble the ball? You got to be ready. Come on, stop this, man. Grow up. Show up. Don't make me throw up. You call yourself a Christian. I know a lot of people that call themselves a Christian because they carry a big Bible or they dress a certain way. La mujer y la hermana tienen una larga falda o el pelo largo y la lengua larga y se llaman cristiana. Listen, el cristiano se conoce por su fruto. Así que deja el lloriqueo, deja ese mamboleo y ponte en la garra del Señor y dile al diablo, salte de aquí, que aquí reina Cristo. Study. Get yourself in shape. Get ready. <laughs> Woo -hoo 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 yeah, yeah. So he says, yeah, study, man. Show yourself proof up to God. So when the pastor told me, you ready to preach? I said, yeah, I'm ready, pastor. I got the word in me. I've been meditating. I stay in prayer. I stay in God's face. I stay in the word. Just give me the mic. If you're a singer, you go to a church and say, can you sing a special? Our, our, our soloist didn't show up. Oh, wait, I, I got to go to my car. I got to get my CD. I got to get my music. Let me goggle. You got to be ready at any time. That's my thought, man. You give me the mic right now, I'll preach. So he says, study to show yourself approved. Let me give you three words briefly and then I'll let you go. Number one, we ought to love the word. If you're going to study, you need to love the word. Mm. Hell yeah, yeah. There's everything in the word that you need. You need have problems with fear, anxiety, insecurities. You have any complexes, any inferiority, whatever it is. Discouragement. You need healing. You need deliverance. It's all in the word. God spoke it into existence and it's here in the living word. <laughs> Love the word. Love it. Love it more than you do your cell phone. Oh, man. <laughs> Woo. Man, thing skin my head that rocked it through him. Love it more than you do all your, uh, you know, the, the technology. Your videos. Your games. The word, baby. Get in there. Love it and then learn it. Learn it. I know Christians for years. You ask them for a verse, they don't know a verse in the Bible. They don't know. They don't know. They don't have one. When I was in Teen Charlie, before you graduated, you had to learn 125 verses, memorize them. The scripture, where it was located, and read and recite it all in front of the class. Not all in one shot, but before you graduate, throughout your term. 125 verses of the Bible. 
I still remember about 75 of them. <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to get back into memorizing at least once a week, one verse. Just study the word. Learn it. You can't learn it if you don't study it. Love it, learn it, and then live it. How are you going to live it if you don't know what it is? That's why many Christians are defeated today. The devil's got you bamboozum. <laughs> bamboozum. He's blind to. Why is it so dark in here? Open your eyes to the truth. That's why people throw out different doctrines and you move with it every day. Somebody's saying something different. Say, I believe this. Now I believe that. Now I believe this. You might as well create a, a dance like uh, cha, 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 cha. Listen, live the word. Put it into practice. I know what my Bible says. Mm, you can't make me doubt them because I know too much about them. So love the word. Learn the word. Live the word. Ah, we fail sometimes. But let me tell you something before I let you go, uh, Mr. McGee or Brother Magoo. Listen to me. If you fail, if you fall, if you commit an act of sin or a mistake, living the word tells you repent. You didn't know that, right? See, we judge each other. Ah, look what he said. Look what he did. Uh -huh. Repenting is living the word. The word encourages us to repent. Of course, not to continue in sin. You got to read Romans chapter 6. Here I go quoting it. What should we say then? Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? The apostle Paul says, not indeed. Of course not. Because we've been crucified with Christ. We're buried with him and we resurrect with him in the what? Newness of life. And then in 2 Corinthians also it says that if any man, woman be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things pass away. Behold, they all become new. So when you fall, you make a mistake. Not that you practice it. It's not your lifestyle. It's not a plan. It's not uh, premeditated. But when it happens, you repent. God said repent. He told Peter, listen, if he repents, your brother sins against you. If he repents seven times, 70 in a day. Count that. Mathematician. Repenting is part of living the word. And then he restores. You don't believe me? Ask the prodigal son. He'll tell you, yeah, he restored me. He restores. Put you back on track. And now you know, don't do that again. So love the word of God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because God's word is his what? His thoughts. The, the expression of an invisible thought. The living word. Christ incarnated. <laughs> and then learn it. Study Little by little. He said, sure, I don't have time. He gave you 24 hours just like he did me. He didn't give you 20 hours. He didn't give you 16. He gave you 24. Make time. Take 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Read a little something, a little passage. Read some of the Proverbs. Read some of the Psalms. Go into the Old Testament. Read Genesis. Read Exodus. Read Leviticus. Deuteronomy. Numbers. Then go back into the uh, New Testament. <laughs> read Matthews. Read the Gospel of John. Read 1st, 2nd Timothy. 1st, 2nd Corinthians. Romans. Go back into the Old Testament and read the Proverbs. Uh, read some some of the Psalms, like I said before, huh? and then go into the prophet, uh, Isaiah the prophet, Jeremiah, Seek you the prophet, the minor prophet, uh, uh, Habakkuk, uh, uh, Joah, ah, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, there's so many of them, and keep reading, and keep studying, keep reading, and then of course you learn it, I know what the Bible says, and then you live it, there's a storm coming, that's all right, I'm in the boat with Jesus. He's going to calm the storms. Mira el diablo. Ah, I rebuke him in the name of Jesus. And I just quote the word against him. Ah, the doctor told you. I believe in God's healing. You start to live the word of God. <laughs> so study. That's my message. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray everybody gets a hunger for the word of God. And that they will study the word. To love it. To learn it. To live it. In Jesus' name, walk in victory. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>